okay, if I show up today, am I a police officer or am I an EMT or am I a firefighter? So I think I can't 100% answer your question as far as number of people at this point because in my own opinion, I would ask for as many as I can get or as many as I can afford to have in the firehouse. If I take it to her group and they say, well, we can't afford that many, well, how, how many can we afford? That's what we're going to put in there. And so I don't have that exact number for you. Does that help at all? Um, how many, how many do you have right now on staff? Currently, we have two full-time firefighter EMTs. So if there was a fire right now, two fire trucks would go. We would have to rely on people that are called up and come into the station to fill those apparatus. The so no, not technically. It's pretty much you'd be pretty much we would be uh, people. You'd in. be up the creek without a pass. How many? Right well, okay. Well, we would call how many volunteers. We would do mutual aid basically. We, we still have paid on all firefighters, but like you said, you you never know. Um, that's why I think a lot of then it goes stuff. back to the board. How I mean, when we signed the contract with them, how many people did we expect we were getting? Oh, okay. Let me interject something here. In my uh, little insurance world, I work with about 45 municipalities. Williams Bay. They get their service from uh, out of the Fontana Fire Station. They don't have enough people. They have two EMTs from EMT firefighters that man Williams Bay Station from eight to four. That's it. The rest of it's on call for Williams Bay. Fontana, uh, down there, there they usually have four. They take care of you know bigger area. And let's face it, people, Fontana's got a lot more money than Delmar. Okay, a lot more money. But they have four down there. The village of Walworth, two during the day, paid. After four o'clock or whatever, it's back to pay on call or whatever it is. Uh, those, those I can tell you, know, you, a lot of us know those jurisdictions. All of them are, that I mentioned, they're certainly bigger than the village or the town of Pemira. Uh, but two, we get two EMT firefighters manning that station. If something happens in the bay, Fontana's coming. So they pay for the two sitting there all day at the station, whatever that is. But I'm just telling you, you're looking for numbers, and how many people. They have two all the time. The other night, hey, correct me if I'm wrong. But we had a head-on car accident a week ago on Little Prairie Road. Is that right? And 27 seconds after the call came in, the ambulance was rolling out of the station. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, they get out there. There's a two-car accident. Correct me when I'm wrong back there, please. But I believe there was four people injured. Well, obviously, they're going to call for Eagle or Western Lakes because there's four potential people that are injured. That's where the mutual aid comes in. They don't have a contract signed for Western Lakes to come over and sit at our station. They have a mutual aid agreement with a whole bunch of different jurisdictions that says if we need your help, you're coming, right? That's what it comes down to. Right. That's the type of contract they have. And we've all entered into it. Every jurisdiction has, to the best of my knowledge. So, I would tell you that there's two people sitting in our fire station all the time to respond to the township. Now, they could get a call in the village or a call in the town, and there could be another call, and we're going to have to call Western Lakes or whoever, Whitewater, whatever. But two people are there to respond for EMT calls and firefighting at all times, 24-7. How many understand. people does it take to man an ambulance? Well, I thought it was three. Oh, well, Lord, isn't it? Go ahead. What's the question? To man an ambulance, isn't it three people, the driver, and they want two behind? Ideally, it would be great, yeah. Yeah, that's what it was when we had the volunteers. It was always three in the ambulance. Yeah. When I was on there at Fort Bufat, 40 years, 
There were 32 people. It was full the whole time, and there were 30 people on a list. Those days are gone. They're just simply gone. It's, the times have changed. You know, us farm people, you know, it was great that we were on the fire department because we could respond, you know, within five minutes from a farm or whatever. Uh, those days, you know, are very hard. Some, some people that work uh, by the hour, their bosses won't even let them out in some cases. Isn't that right? They, they can respond to a fire or PMS call. So I, 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 I guess the bottom line here is we, we give them, the township, a lot of money. And I guess my concern as township residents is that we're not getting the value what we as township is paying them. Because I, I haven't heard a lot of you know, confidence out of, out of them. They're all brand new, I understand, but why are they all so brand, you know, brand new in this? So I guess that's where my personal opinion is, is that I don't know that we're getting currently the value that we are paying. I think you had a concern with insurance, I, I, just had, I remember. You I had a big concern with insurance. Frank, that was a little bit of correction <coughs> something that was said. I had a personal conversation with oh. Scott Pavlock in which he told me that the village was going to be contracting with Western Lakes to have staff come to the fire station and be in the fire station. I was told the same thing. Uh, Thank you, Scott. I, 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 can, uh, I can talk to that, I guess. Um, we did talk to Western Lakes, not contracted, but they are willing to come and help us out if there's a need. There's in, not been a need at this point. But but in the firehouse or all the, the responses all the from respond. He said yeah, the I have, I, Excuse me. I've not personally had a discussion with them, but that's that will be something that I'll have to follow up on because I, I don't know 100%. But I have talked to their chief and said that if indeed you need us, we will come. But there's nothing contracted or money paid out from this department at all for that at this point. We just heard that Western Lakes comes from? Their closest station would be either Sullivan or Dawson. And they do provide, um, we're not a paramedic level service, so if we had something that was a above basic life support call, we would certainly call them in for paramedic level service. That's been a something that's been going on here for years, so. Right, yes. Okay, when Small, okay. Oh, go ahead, when Small was here, we were utilizing the Ashwaubenon model. Are we still doing that? I can't speak to that. I don't know what that is. Well, that's the cross train. That's where everybody's cross trained, and that's where we have the, seem to have the best response. So the question is, are you changing that now? Is that being changed? I, I can't really say that I'm changing. I, I don't even know what it is. I cross train and what? <clears throat> I, can, I can talk to that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Technically, the village. And this is something new to me too. You know, I spent 32 years on the Milwaukee Police Department. So um, to come here to Palmyra, the cross train department is your full-time firefighters and police officers ideally should be cross trained so that they can go, and EMS, so that they can go to any type of call. That was James Small's dream from 2015 on to the time that he, he left last year. But as Frank was saying and some of these other comments have been made, obviously everybody knows that policing, public safety has all changed probably for the last five, ten years. People just don't want these kind of jobs anymore, so it's harder and harder to find people. So, as it stands now, and Kenny can probably correct me, Kenny's cross basically, as an officer at Basic Life Support, I'm a, a EMR, emergency medical responder, basically a first responder. It's the lower, lowest level of EMS training, but I come as a crew on the, on the ambulance. I'm also a pump operator, so I can drive the fire engine and put the wet stuff on the red stuff. And I'm a police officer, so I am cross-trained at all three. And the only other one currently that we have is John? John. John, and John is paramedic level trained, but he is not able to act at that level because we are a basic service. 
is firefighter one, firefighter two, I don't even know what all firefighter certifications he has, and he is a law enforcement officer. And after um, the only ones on the, I don't think we have any on the firefighter side. The, the Ben? No. Uh, <coughs> Police cross? Or no, uh, anybody that's firefighter trained, that's officer Kyle. trained. Kyle, Kyle is one of our full time right. firefighter EMS. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I don't know what all levels you have. Then that's the extent. Um, yeah. yeah, he is the only other firefighter trained. We have one so, more. We have one more um, EM, basic EMT that is currently in fire school. I think she just took her state test the other day and passed. So she will very shortly be also Fire One certified. Again, I'm not 100% certain on that. Please don't crucify me if I'm wrong, but that is my understanding. Okay. So this whole idea that James had, maybe it worked before I got here. Maybe it was the best thing since sliced bread in 2015, 2016, whatever. But again, as times have changed and it's been harder, it's hard enough to get somebody trained just in fire and or police you know, let alone for them to be cross-trained in both. And even at a supervisory level, that's even, that's even almost impossible. So frankly, as the Fire and Police Commission looked at this and how we had to uh, spend probably at least six months trying to find a director that could fill all these categories, uh, short of us hiring Scott, I was going to go to the village board, and they're actually the ones then who make these final decisions and say this idea that you have as Palmyra being a public safety department, it's just not going to work anymore. You know, we're just, it's, it's just an uphill battle. As of now, that to, because we've hired Scott, we've got some new direction, maybe we can salvage that idea. I'm not sure. Again, those, that's, all I can do as the commissioner was make that suggestion based on some of the things that are happening. It's really up to the village board. Some ordinances would have to get changed. And there's some other things that would have to be put in place for us to, to actually go forward with that idea. You guys heard about this before, or is this the first you're hearing about it? No, I have heard about the cross training. No, but I mean that they're going away from the cross chain oh, because you guys entered yeah, into a contract with them based on that system. Well, except and the ability of that system, and now the system's changing. It just seems, you know, customer service would tell you that you should at least let them know that things are changing. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, for the very I don't know. Yeah, I would agree. I, I agree with. Well, it goes back to my comment about communication with your customers. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, the th main, again, the main thing we're contracting <coughs> for is response for fire and EMS. And we're getting the, well, like those other jurisdictions, we're getting at least two people, minimum, are coming on a call. The only reason they want is they're tied up on another call someplace right. else, okay. when somebody else is coming. But that, to my knowledge, is being covered. How far do you put the schedule up? Two weeks? Are the the full-time people, the schedule rotation is out for the entire year. And we are filling in around uh, with part-time paid on call, paid on premise, and full-timers coming in to pick up the shifts that we can't get covered by part-timers. Anybody out there has EMS or fire, please put in an application. See, okay. We can give you some help. Back in, in the old days, 40 years ago, I'm just going to mention this. Cool. Go ahead, finish. Yeah, sorry, I didn't want to go there. Back in the old days, the village police departments paid for somebody to go through recruit school. That's how I went through it back in the day for police. Okay, now suddenly everybody wanted to be a cop, and oh, we're not going to pay for that anymore. You have to have 60 college credits, right? Do they have, have to do that with fires back, you know, for a while there too? Then they be a firefighter, EMT job. Well, now they're paying people to go through EMT school, paying for them to go through firefighter school because there's a lack of people wanting to do this job. Uh, and that's just the way it is. It's, it's gone for full circle. I'm old enough to see that. So. <laughs> but that's what has happened. It's just too bad. Of course, every time you turn around, we're throwing police under the bus. Yeah. Whatever. 
Not here. Oh, Josh. I, I got it. I, I'm not sure potentially as a scheduler or PFC or in charge. You guys have two full time fire EMS. Is, is, did I understand that correct? Correct. And then you also supplement with part time. Correct. Paid on premise and paid on call. Correct. Do you and we have any openings for, I don't know the exact number for full time people still because I don't, I don't know the number. Correct. Right. So I guess my, my question is aside from just the full time, how many paid on premise or paid on call people are you supplementing? It's obviously, if you've only got two, that's two shifts a day, which leaves a third open. But um, I don't have an exact call. number for you, but I wish it was more than what we have. Uh, and that it's not just a Palmyra problem, it's every small town USA right now. I mean, the volunteerism is, is gone, and people want to get paid for what they do nowadays, I guess. Uh, it's just, I came from a department years ago where if you didn't live within six blocks of the firehouse, you didn't make a truck, and now people can live miles away and, you know, still make a truck these days. It's, it's not a good situation for anybody. Nowadays, that's why people are having hired full-time people for these positions because the volunteers and pay on call just are a thing of the past. <coughs> What's it going to do? I mean, is there any semblance of an idea of how many you know, pay on call or otherwise employees you have? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch. How many pay on call do you have? Do you know? I would be estimating, if that's okay with you guys, yeah. that, well, like I said, please don't please find me if I'm wrong. I believe we have, in addition to the two police officers, two full-time EM, we have eight to ten, that, but most of those people have full-time jobs elsewhere, so, you know, some are available weekends, some are available during the week, so we kind of have to piecemeal a schedule together. Now, you can make up full-time positions as by, by some, yes, some, some, not. Not. some, some, yes, some, no. Uh, I'm not going to get into detail of what everybody does for full-time jobs. Okay, but, but they're not the professional. Excuse me? They're ghost-like or professional. Yes. Uh, and, and a lot of them are advanced EMTs elsewhere, but you can't access them. I'm just concerned about response time. And they come from Oconmore. It just—it it is what it is, and we're not getting the answers. I think we're just spinning our wheels here. So well, learning nothing. Well, one more time. The fire station is manned by two full-time EMTs. There are two people, not necessarily full-time. It's been that way a long time. Well, I believe it was Mike. Yep. Uh, I'm still confused. Um, Josh was heading in the right direction. What I want to ask you, you said earlier, our fire hall is staffed with EMS 24 7. Correct. So, how much of that is our current staff and how much is, um, what's the phrase when you have other people come and help? Mutual aid. How much so we have 24 we have, currently we have two three shifts technically that should have um, two people two full-time people and they work a 48 96 shift it's called so they work two days on and then they have four days off and that's rotates so that there's constantly two people in the station we don't we have not hired all those people yet so currently two people are full-time on those shifts the rest would be filled by paid on call or paid on premise people. What that percentage ratio is, I, I don't know, but we only have two people that are currently full time that rotate on those shifts. The other people fill in where there's vacancies on those shifts. So it is 24 7 with people in the firehouse, not 24 7 with mutual aid or Correct. Reliable. People in the firehouse. We had an emergency at our house. The ambulance was there within five minutes. Not only were they professional, they took the time to help me get my head straight. So I don't think anybody here has to worry about protection. Thank you. And please, um, 
Penny, and I'm sorry, I don't know your name. None of this is being critical about the current staff. All, we're, all we are making sure of, because of all the rumors that are out there, all the misinformation, all the correct information, we want to hear from the source what the exact story is so our people can rest easy. So please don't take it that we're asking anything like that. I can't speak for them. I understand. So, I've been here for 35 years, protecting the citizens of the building of the in the last however many of the I'm busting my ass to make sure that they have so a fire truck stop. That is very and I'm running right. right. So we are doing everything we possibly can. We need the help of the community to send people and have an independent list all the way. Because the few of us that are here cannot keep up this pace. So please, if you know that, I've got a question in the back of there, Dan. Also, given the discussion, and the fact that we have some new people and a new organization, would it be prudent to make a motion to have a report from the village from the EMS to the fire department on the agenda and next month report? That's, thank you. That's exactly what was my second question. I, I move to have that on the agenda report from the second village to EMS and our next month report. Okay. okay. There's a motion to me to have a representative from the fire EMS come to our next board meeting by Dan Olson, the second. And Johnson. However, there is a spot on the uh, agenda for the uh, fire department, EMS, where, just to let you know, and maybe you haven't heard this, where somebody from the fire department comes EMS, and gives a report, a report on how many total calls there is, uh, how many were in the township, EMS, fire, whatever. Um, but we can vote on that, but we are, I believe, doing exactly that now. Right, just add, adding the hiring and staff levels to that. I think we okay. should vote on the motion. Okay, I think, think it should be an older new business where we follow a specific topic where we ask Mike or whoever to come and give us the answers that you didn't have the answers to. Okay, just clerk, clerk that down. I'll get a hold of it. Yeah. So, a motion to remain seconded. Is there any further discussion on it? We can't dictate to the village fire and EMS group what they do or don't do. But we have an open slot on the agenda. When they can make it, they've made it. And well, they've I given think, us those reports. I think the motion is to invite them to come. That wasn't the motion. <coughs> I understand. Would you like to change the motion, Dan? Gladly. I move that we invite the village to give us, since, since we have new people in new roles, give them the opportunity to learn and establish um, their own their own uh, staffing goals and so forth and invite them to our next monthly meeting in our regular agenda spot to give an update on staffing levels. Okay, is there a second to that? It has to be okay by the second. Okay, the same first and second. Any further discussion on that? Yes, I would just like to add, keep in mind that we are customer, a big customer. Sure. And that's the second one yeah, in the market. Yeah, that's just saying. I'm sorry. <laughs> what, do you call it? what do you call it? Huh? What do you call it? 50% customer. A big, isn't that what I said? Very big. Let's yeah, yeah. <coughs> vote. Okay. Oh, go ahead, ma'am. I'd just like to say that I've had the experience of calling the EMS four times. All times were very serious. Most of them were a while ago. <coughs> and we had excellent response. But I think that what we have to come up with and understand is that you're right. Things aren't like they used to be. And People have to band together, and different cities and villages have to get together and share the responsibilities of all of this. And I was in one call. We called. Penny came. Oh, my God. She's like an angel. We couldn't get the lady out of a ditch. So she called an EMS. And the EMS came, and the three of us couldn't get her out. So they called Eagle, and Eagle sent three men. 
Maybe it took them 10 minutes to get there. But if they had been called originally, we wouldn't have been there 45 minutes. We've got to understand that we have to band together with other villages and other cities. Where I lived in Glendale, they did it, where they had big time cities, Glendale, um, Fox Point, Bayside, all of those places only have one department, and then they have these liaison places. Like, we could have fire engines, and we could have ambulances, and EMS trucks here, but they're, they're manned by different cities, because Elmira isn't big enough, and I think that the village has to understand that too. And we can talk here until we're blue in the face. Until village, the village of Palmyra faces it. All the questions. We're just talking. What was that? All, All the, the questions. questions. That means vote. It means vote. Okay. Uh, all in favor of this last motion signified by or raising their hands. Could you repeat the motion? <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> that we invite the village EMS representatives to our next monthly town board meeting to give an update on staffing to answer all the questions that they're not able to tonight. Thank you, you so much. Thank to you. come up with the answers. All in favor signify by raising their hand. <laughs> Opposed, raise their hand. Motion period. <coughs> Any other uh, <coughs> topics? Any more I have a topic. Uh, does the town now have insurance? Uh, I know that uh, your insurance was canceled, and Deb Ball made some not very nice comments about rural insurance that the town had had for many years. And I was wondering if you have insurance and which company it's with and how much, what is it, diff, how is it different from the previous insurance? Um, this is so Rob took care of that and I can't tell you what a good job you did on whole, whole thing. But, uh, they haven't, in fact, in insurance, my, insurance myself, we couldn't even get the guy to come to a board meeting. I don't want to knock rural insurance. Okay. I don't want to hear that. I want to know how your new insurance is better than rural insurance. Okay, go ahead. We are covered <coughs> as of April 11th, which was the date that rural non renewed us. And we are covered. Um, we are paying, and this all was all gone through at the last board meeting. Um, so watch for the minutes. But glad to answer all your questions. I didn't bring all the details, so I'm going to paraphrase. Um, we are covered. The new insurance is uh, the agent is ANSA and Associates. The insurance company is CIC Community Insurance Corporation. Um, just a just a side note on that. Um, wasn't even aware of it till till the end of the process. But CIC's president is John Dirksey, a long time Palmyra resident. He's not anymore, but he's had it. So um, he was very helpful in helping us get a quick quick quote from them, given the time frame we have. But um, we have coverage on everything we had before, some of which are even higher. Like we went from a $4 million liability to $5 million. Uh, the cost is, if I remember correctly, it's about seven or $800 more for the entire year than what we were paying before. And that includes liability, property, work, workers' comp, um, cyber insurance, um, board, bond insurance, uh, everything we had before um, with some increased coverages as well. Some things that were not included in worlds that, um, that we had to pay extra for are included in the current, the current insurance. So I actually think we came out of this with better insurance um, than we had before. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you. 
I will mention one good thing uh, that happened last night, or I'm going to let Josh do it. Why don't you introduce Ring Lake Grove and what's going to happen there? This is Bruce Ring Lake Residency. Um, so, I guess as a public information point, if nothing else, right at this moment in time, Jefferson County Highway Department is going to be reconstructing County Highway H from the village limits to the county limits this summer. Um, timeline is still yet to be determined. Um, along with that project, uh, we have reached out and asked them, because Blue Spring Lake Drive is absolutely adjacent to the project limits um, for a quote to also reconstruct Blue Spring Lake Drive. Technically what's called Town Road 8. For anybody that doesn't know, when you get to the Y, you take a right, and you hit North Blue Spring Lake Drive, that little short section is Town Road 8. And then when you hang up left, back towards the other side of the triangle, um, that technically is North Blue Spring Lake Drive 2. Um, so those three sections, and then I'm gonna call it the Eastern side of the triangle, which is South Shore Drive. Um, from the triangle back out to Highway H, we did get a quote from Jefferson County. Uh, the board talked about it at our last monthly meeting. Forwarded an official request to the Village Board for participation in that project because Blue Spring Lake Drive is a 50 50 right of way, as well as that short little section of South Shore Drive. Um, as of last night, the Village Board did support that moving forward. So I'm going to continue working with the highway department to finalize what the lengths and widths of the overall tons of asphalt would look like, um, bring that back essentially for a second discussion with not only the town board, but also the village board, um, make sure everybody is still on the same page. The county volunteered, so to speak, to build each municipality separately for their fair share portion. Um, so it's not necessarily 50-50 because we're adding in two small sections of whole town roads where the other two are split. So um, we don't, again, don't know the timing of either Highway H or Blue Spring Lake Drive and Triangle, uh, but as long as they were going to be in town, mobilized, and essentially paving roads, uh, we wanted to advance that if we could. The town still has to approve or figure out where we are going to fund that work from. Uh, we did not have any funding for road construction approved in the 2024 budget. So we've got some things to work out between now and the actual launch of the project. Final invoice for it once it's officially off the ground. So. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Andrew is one of the bills for the board. They would appreciate uh, anything else? I, mean, I just want to let our next board meeting, just so you know, it's Monday, May 13th. So just, yeah. At 6 o'clock? Is it here? Town Hall. Town Hall. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second. Go. Okay. Do you have any also? We're adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we've got